Dr. Lauren. It is so good to have you here. And I am just so excited about today. Uh, today was one of those where we just kind of scheduled last minute and it worked out perfectly. So I am so glad we both had the time. And our conversation earlier in this week was really interesting because we were talking about when you're sensitive and you've had mold exposure and finding a safe place to live. And we will dive into that today and all kinds of other um, fun topics, but I want to introduce you. And I'm, we've been in the same circles for a while now, so I'm not exactly sure how we met originally. Um, but one of the things that I love about you is you're a woman of faith like I am. And so a lot of times when we're talking, there's this, this greater purpose and picture. And I find, I, I want to talk about this today because I know listeners, a lot of people who are um, listening and joining us, there's life is really hard right now. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a pervasive fear and anxiety. There's a lot of uncertainty, uh, whether it's business or work or family or personal, people have um, stuff they're dealing with. And what I love about our conversations is there's always this sense of like, God's at work. And I've been many, many times in suffering in difficult situations. And um, in the end, there's always this um, sense of greater purpose. And even in the suffering, he allows us to learn and grow like we never would without it, even though it's not very fun. So I want to talk a little bit about that too, just because I want to give people hope and encouragement today for whatever you're facing. But before I do, let me introduce you. I want to actually read your bio so people can know about who you are. We'll be sure and include links. Um, you guys know where to find me, jillcarnahan.com free blog, free resources, free newsletter. Feel free to sign up for any of that. And I will be sure and link to Dr. Lauren's site and all her great programs um, at the end. We'll talk about that too. So Dr. Lauren Lax helps women work with their body, not against it, so they can reach their highest potential. As a doctor of occupational therapy, functional medicine practitioner, and nutritionist, she specializes in gut health, which we both love to talk about, optimization, restoring immune and hormonal imbalances, and a non-diet approach to body love and food freedom. Let's be sure and come back to that topic too. I think that's really important. Her work is inspired by her 20 years of personal and clinical experience overcoming over 10 chronic conditions that almost killed her and that doctors could not solve, including GI disorders, eating disorders, autoimmune conditions, mold-related illness, Lyme disease, hormone and thyroid imbalances. And today she's made it her life mission to help others do the same. She has been featured on many, many news outlets. I won't read them all, but Lauren, thank you for taking the time to talk to us today and welcome. Thank you. I'm so pumped. Yeah, the spontaneity and the, the stars aligned finally. I know. I know. I love it. I want to start with well, how I always start is you have quite a story. I don't think I even know the whole story. And it sounds like there's a lot of alignment between like what we've been through. I want, I want to hear your story of, of some of the things you've been through that have gotten you to where you are today. Yeah, 110%. And so um, my story began in healthcare really begins from day one that I was born, like as far as just like um, a lot of the cards stacked against me and my health and kind of knowing what we know about gut health and maybe what a lot of your listeners know about gut health um, just started early on having gut problems early on and just how much our gut can impact our immune system our mindset and our hormone balance. And so C-section baby, antibiotic baby, <laughs> processed food baby, like from the get go constipated process, uh, just like most of my life or early life was spent just not feeling super well. Um, grew up in a very um, upper middle class, just really loving family um, as well. And at an early age, began um, to struggle with what I now or later would come to find out was anorexia. And that story really began about age nine, 10, wanting to fit in with other popular pretty little girls and standing on the uh, playground one day with some girls and the queen bee says, oh my gosh, you guys, I weighed myself last night. I'm 69 pounds. I'm so fat. And um, well, what do you guys weigh? One by one, we had to go around the circle and report to this queen bee. And um, at the time of the healthy 10 year old girl in the fourth grade, um, and, but I gulped and I lied and just remember going home that day, standing home in the pantry and turning over a Dorito snack pack and learning a language I had never known before, which is fat grams and calories. Yeah. And really for the next bit, like my, um, middle school, high school, college years was really spent fighting, um, various sorts of eating disorders, um, and orthorexia as well, just becoming really obsessed with healthy eating over training and really driving my body into this state of chronic stress, um, which I think 
played a role later on in my life, um, kind of like with the limbic system and what we know about like mold illness and everything that came up later. But um, really my, that story came, came to a head when I was 23 years old and stepped on the scale for, and for the first time was scared. And I saw a number I had not seen since I was that 10 year old girl. And it's just like everything flashed back. And I was 23 in a young adult body studying occupational therapy at the time in Nashville. And um, my faith was, has always been very important and part of my journey. And it was just like, it got really real. And I remember getting in the car that morning to go to the YMCA and praying, God, help me make a change today. Like, this is not okay. And I don't feel good. I was starting to have chest pains regularly. I was running on feet with stress fractures all the time. My body was just really depleted and caving in. And um, when I got to the YMCA that morning, I got out of my car, got my magazines to read on my Stairmaster and not one, but eight other individuals walked up. And these were eight other individuals that were gym goers. I had seen all the past year. They didn't know me from Adam and they spoke up and just said, Lauren, we want to help you. And I was like, what? Uh, we don't know what's going on, but it just seems like your health's been declining and we're worried about you. And again, don't know these people more than just saying hello in the mornings and um, I now call these people my eight YMCA angels because um, literally they drove me to Vanderbilt Hospital and within 48 hours I was in the ICU and the doctor saying they may need to put a pacemaker in. My heart rate was nearly in the 20s and um, oh. it's just like my body was depleted, giving out and um, I couldn't I couldn't stop it on my own power um, prior. And so, but I remember just the night that had that happened, my heart going that low just feeling a sense of peace and it was like really from the Lord and just saying like Lauren this is your time and not my time to go <laughs> my time to um really survive through that and but he said buckle up it's gonna be a ride and um I had been in and out of hospitals and treatment centers like over the past 15 years leading up to that and just the same story pop tarts pizza Prozac was the typical treatment Wow. very much a symptom-based model, that eating disorder recovery model, um, which is why I love not treating the symptoms nowadays yeah. in my work. Um, but I ended up spending another four weeks on uh, feeding tubes, heart rate monitors, IV fluids, and then was kind of like sent out to treatment again. Uh, but something in me had changed. And I ended up staying a year in Miami, Florida uh, in a treatment center, very conventional treatment for eating disorders. But um, I knew life on the other side was going to be different and I had no idea what exactly that looked like, but it was just walking through that journey of faith. And I wrote a book about all that, like just with all the little things that God was teaching me during the time, like Mr. Bagel day, the day I had to have two bagels and God just really like, kind of like breaking my fear of carbs for one, but just saying like, <laughs> trust in me, um, through this and. Uh, just like countless, just, um, I guess just stories and ways that he stretched and grew me in my heart. So getting out of treatment, I was about 24 and I was just like, wow, life I'm reborn. And like, I say 23 is my magic spirit age. I still feel like I'm 23 because that's really when I came to life again. Um, and, but yet my journey wasn't over yet. And it, what I call post recovery, recovery began to happen. And what happens to your body after just years of stress, yeah. um, chronic dieting, chronic eating disorders, you name it. It's like ill health does not happen overnight. And we do a lot of that work in functional medicine, helping an individual with a timeline. What got you to where you are today or what were those triggers? And so I ended up being diagnosed with 10 different chronic conditions later, like in those follow-up years, a lot of it autoimmune related. Um, I mean, most recently and near and dear to my heart was going through mold illness and then like Lyme coming up at the same time, just something I probably had had for a very long time in my body. Um, but it was just like the perfect storm, but I learned so much through it. It's just experience is the best teacher and the only way in is through. And, um, I'm such a student, like I love learning and God allowed my own health journey and body to be like my own textbook. Um, and really just like, it was actually <laughs> the day I found out about mold on it, that I had mold. I ended up in the ER one night. Uh, I was going to take the MCAT the next day and I did take the, the MCAT the next day still. No. Um, uh, but ended up feeling, um, woke up at like 2 AM in the middle of the night, feeling like I was having a heart attack and it was a severe asthma attack. 
Mm. And that's uh, from breathing in mold spores all along my body just like felt depleted. But again, like experience being the best teacher and it's just God through my own health journey has allowed me to learn so much firsthand about chronic illness. And then I'm just really making it my life mission to help others, no matter what challenge it is they face to like really bust through those ceilings and to know like, it doesn't have to be on your willpower. It can be through his. And so, um, and it like, it just lightened the load so much. And just even in the midst of like quarantine or COVID life, like, as you mentioned, it's just like, what are we learning right now? What is the opportunity here? Versus like, oh my gosh, like what is happening to me? It's just like really seeing like, what is the opportunity from a health perspective, from a life perspective, a reset perspective? There's so much like that can be gained from such a hard time, I think. Lauren, I love that. And thank you for sharing. I know you've probably shared many, many times and in your book, but this is the first time I've heard your full story. And I'm so deeply touched because I, I, I like you, have journeyed through lots of suffering. And I look back, my very first really big suffering was cancer at 25. And at the time it was just shocking. And, and I never um, doubted God. Like I never doubted that he was good, but it was still really hard to face the reality. And at the time I still was like, why in the world? I didn't like say, why God, why me? But I also did say, this is hard. This is difficult. And now that I look back, um, I might get choked up here because I look and there's no greater gift that I had than going through cancer and going through Crohn's because there's no way you and I would understand people to the level that we'd understand them without having that experience. And I'm like, literally like, Thank you, God, for cancer. Thank you for your eating disorder. Like he gave us such a gift because when we experience that suffering and when we experience firsthand, there's things about mold, about Lyme, about cancer for me, about eating disorders for you that we know that no textbook could ever teach us, right? There's things that we can see in our patients' faces. They have faced those things. And all of this is the physical, the emotional, the spiritual, the mental. And we know on all levels it's not like we've arrived. We're in the journey with you, but we know that it takes all of those levels in order to heal. And it's like God's continually stripping away. Okay, you're hanging on to that. Well, what about this? And saying there's this greater thing. Like I always think of COVID as it came. If you had no anchor, nothing that you were really founded in, this was a really rough ride for you. So if you're there and you're like, oh my gosh, my whole world's falling apart. My finances, my relationships, my work. For you and I, Lauren, there's this deeper anchor and not everybody's going to have the same one as us, but there's a sense of solidness despite the waves and the, the crazy chaos of life that nothing can move that inside of us. And I always want that gift for my patients of finding that, that deep anchor in something that's more, more important, more powerful, and a lot greater than just us because we're all terminal. We're all going to die. And so that, that sense is that the greater sense of purpose is really powerful and it's powerful on healing because otherwise you get stuck with anger, right? Like, uh, or like, why God, or these kinds of things. And we've all been through that. That's okay to go through that phase, but we have to get past it to a place of understanding um, because there is purpose and meaning in suffering, right? And, and I'm sure you can say the same, some of the best lessons as hard as they were came through the suffering, right? A hundred percent. Yeah, I just like, I'm, it's, it's like no regrets anyway. Like, it's just like, there's no sense in saying like, why did it happen? Because I'm just like thankful for, like you said, like it did happen. And like, what are, what are we learning or what have we learned from it? Yeah. And then the most recent mold. Um, now, I also wonder with eating disorders, my story isn't close to what you've suffered through, but I did in high school suffer from a phase where it definitely would have been diagnosed as an eating disorder. And I look back and now that I understand functional medicine, I see all the pieces of nutritional inflammation, um, autoimmunity, and those things and how they play into our cravings and our gut and our feeling like for me, I always felt like puffy and inflamed. And I thought it was fat. And the truth is like, it, it was never really like I wasn't obese or anything, but my body didn't feel like my own because of the inflammation. And then, mm -hmm. then with having the type A kind of perfectionistic controlling personality that I'm recovering from, right? I, I had some of those same things, again, not nearly to the extent you suffered, but I understand well 
And I now understand with functional medicine how zinc deficiency and malabsorption and inflammation and autoimmunity all contribute. And if we could take a look at these young women who are suffering or young men who are suffering from eating disorders and from the functional perspective, give them the nutrients, decrease inflammation. What's your thoughts on that? Because I see in hindsight how big of a play it had to my behaviors at, in my teens. Yeah, no, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. And I think it's just... Um... There's, I mean, so much from a nutrient deficiency perspective, even that can like just tee you up to like struggle more, like from a mindset perspective, like whether it's your B vitamins, zinc and absorption, like just gut in general and like that brain gut connection, you know, 500 million neurons in your yeah. gut and just like serotonin levels. Um, and I think on just like the back end too, of like kind of overcoming those challenges, like if those foundational root causes are not addressed and it's just like again the symptom kind of chasing of just like well she's got anorexia so that means pizza is good for her to yes. like overcome that mentally yes there was a mental component to like being able to like eat a lot of different things yeah. <laughs> and at the same time like if the foundations were not addressed it kind of just kept I kept going back to the eating disorder because my brain was not synapsing appropriately and I didn't feel great. And I think it's like helping a patient also, like when you optimize those foundations actually feel good yes. um, and not just go through the motions of whether it's food or whether it's therapy yeah. or um, even like from an exercise perspective, just yeah. to like, yeah. And I found, you know, we all have, so it's funny cause I went through a phase where like, um, like, I don't, I'm like, I don't have addictions, you know, I don't do drugs or alcohol, but the truth is we all have what we call medicators and I may not have done drugs or alcohol, um, but, or smoke, whatever. But the truth is that we all have these things and they may not be bad. Like exercise, healthy exercise can be a medicator where we kind of get this endorphins to get away from the stresses of life. That's a healthy way to deal with stress. But there's other things like online shopping or online social media or relationships can be a medicator where we just go from relationship to relationship to relationship because we don't have to feel or just being busy or achieving. I mean, things that are not always bad these are all different types of medicators and they can be just as numbing to us in dealing with the root causes as drugs or alcohol. And so I was really aware that some of my medicators are, um, you know, being busy and doing and not sitting still. And God got me on that. I was like, no, I want you to be still and like be in this place. And for me, when I got more still, some of the motions and things that I was trying to suppress <laughs> came up. I'm like, oh, this is really uncomfortable. But I, God's continuing to teach me that I don't have to always, uh, you know, go from thing to thing to thing or take on new projects, but I can actually just sit in his presence and be okay with the sadness that comes up or the anger that comes up or some emotions that I never was comfortable with. Um, and I think it's a very real thing because all of us struggle with something as far as that goes. And we all have different ways to deal with it, healthy and unhealthy. Yeah, like what is the why behind it, I guess? Yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, so what a story and what a thing, what a things you've overcome and, and continue. And again, there's a lot of similarities with the autoimmunity, the Lyme and the mold. One thing we talked about on the phone that I really wanted to talk about today was we're both mold sensitive. We've had mold. We're, we're much better. We're starting to recover. But you have just been on the search for a home, a, a safe place to dwell in Austin, Texas. And it's definitely humid and moldy there, kind of like Boulder. <laughs> Mold, Tell yeah. us a little bit about your experience and what you learned. Cause I don't know how many tests you went through. You told me 40 or something. Yeah, definitely 40 homes. Two came back clean. Um, in the, I guess the course of probably three, three, four months. Um, I'm currently in an Airbnb. If you can tell from my lovely paintings that are not my style. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, just kind of like have lived this like wonderful vagabond life for, um, really I got sick two years ago with mold. I'd been living in a rental home for two years and that's my health really started to decline. Um, when I was hey, there, but now, real quick. so how did that actually happen? Was that a rental? What, 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 what yeah. originally triggered you? It was a rental that I was living in and like, granted, we've probably all lived in mold. Like think about college dorms. That's yeah. like mold city there. So I just never, it was a, as affected until like this season of my life where I had actually had a colonoscopy, which I think played a big role. I passed out during the colonoscopy. It wiped me clean. It reset my gut in a different way. Um, and I think I just like was a good host for mold to come yeah. in after just, um, some like things like that, getting sick, et cetera, had happened that year. And so lived in this home, 
and that night of feeling like I was having the heart attack happened. Um, that was in March, 2018 and something in my head just like triggered mold. I wonder, like, I think it's just like in the back, yeah. like God put that in my head. Um, but I had an inspector come out the next day, had like all, uh, just black mold all on the HVAC system of that. Wow. It was a beautiful newish home. Um, it was only a 2010 build and we had actually had Hurricane Harvey in Houston. I'm in Austin, but just a ton of rain during that time too. So our home, one of the sidewalls just got really wet and started leaking. Um, but never really thought, I never, when I heard mold before, I always thought you would see it visually. Yeah. I never saw this mold visually until like <laughs> the inspector took pictures of the HVAC, which I never went into the attic area. But um, yeah, from there, it was just kind of like this cascade of like, what we mast cell activation syndrome that really took place. And so every like four to six weeks, I was going from doctor to doctor, specialist to specialist with a different random diagnosis, like mm -hmm. diabetes and then the hypothyroidism and then migraines and allergies and asthma and like things I never had before. I'm just like what's happening in my body. And the doctors couldn't explain it. And we were just doing all the scans. Um, but like really as I got more into understanding what mold is, what it is I have, um, I, it was then that I, I mean, really realized I got to get out of here, um, of the place I was living and began this bounce around of just, um, and also learning a lot about multiple chemical sensitivity as well, which can oftentimes go hand in hand. Cause I, I bounced from that house to a, a newer house in the neighborhood, a street over, and like could not even uh, like breathe in the room. And the yeah. girl's like, this is new. I was uh, just renting from a kind of a girl my age and it was the VOCs and just like all the, the off gassing of his own carpet. So th there's just like a lot of uh, chemical and environmental sensitivities my body um, began to develop. And then ended up uh, finding a spot to land for about a great nine month stretch. It was just like, oh God, thank you. And then a new roommate, I was living with two girls, a new roommate moved in and brought in like thrift city into her room, <laughs> just like a thrift store, like kind of um, self-proclaimed hoarder, she said, and like lots of clothes. It recontaminated the air with just like a mycotoxin. Wow. Uh, mycotoxins and just like my body was set off again. And so just like being in this really like, I call it princess in the pea spot, just gotta be like in the perfect spot but yes. um, going through that and we as practitioners often like say like you can't really fully begin healing until you are in a cleaner spot and it just like has been exhausting I think I've moved a total of I would say 12 times in wow. a matter of a year and a half of just like two weeks here a few months here wow. an Airbnb here and um and tested yeah. over 40 homes in that time with an awesome um mold testing company global analytics that uh, i work directly with the owner of that company now and we'll you just probably kept him in business right like so. I really have. He, he, he uh, loves my business but he's been so great and he's so great at like even just questions i'll have about like what air scrubber should i get or like if there's mold is it remediable can i really do anything about that and then just like learning about like healthy building as well and so I mean kind of like which has brought me to where I'm at today um which is actually looking now for a home to just like either buy or build and um I, I think like that's really we talked about this past week I reached out to you about like what would what would you do um in the home it was just like the perfect home I was gonna put this offer in on been praying for a clean spot. It was the builder I wanted, the neighborhood I wanted. Um, and just going into the home, it seemed like everything should be perfect in my head, but something in my body did not feel right in the home. And um, it's just still like really honoring the body and not pushing the body over the edge because um, I've already been there. And um, I think it's just a lot of the off gassing that happens with a brand new build that just got finished. And so still I'm just like in this place of like, do I do it? Do I not do it? Um, and at the same time, like the something the Lord's been putting on my heart is like, he closed the lilies of the field. He's like, he's yeah. sustaining this far. I'm, I'm living to tell about all of this. And just knowing that um, it, lo typical Lauren fashion would be want to take control of the reins and just like, this is how it should go. And yet I think sometimes when things don't work out like we plan or like we think they should be planned, 
it's usually because there's something better. And just to like really lean into that is really where I'm at and a day at a time versus like, you know, five years down the road. Gosh, I love, love that. That that brings to mind so many things that our patients deal with. Like, first of all, when you have a mold exposure, often your cells, the mast cells, these are some of the protector cells in our body, they get irritated. And some people are more prone to that. Those who are usually mold sensitive are more prone to that. And I've talked to Dr. Afrin, Dr. Theo Theoridis, some of the mast cell experts in the whole United States of America. And um, they all, um, whether or not they treat mold, understand that mold is probably one of the biggest triggers to mast cell activation. And so this is super common and you listening, probably some of you have this as well. Feel free to comment if you do or have experienced, but all of a sudden you find you have hives, you have rashes, you have sensitivities. And then you mentioned something, Lauren, um, multiple chemical sensitivity, which is this term that's not official medical diagnoses, but any of us in this functional world, we acknowledge it, we understand it, we see it. It's just sadly, it doesn't have its own ICD-10 code yet, which doesn't make it not a disease. Um, but what I describe this as is we all have the bucket capacity that we're born with to detoxify. So Lauren, you and I were probably born with a smaller bucket. Um, thanks God. <laughs> no. um, and so be, what happens is over a lifetime, that bucket fills up with chemicals and glyphosate and parabens and phthalates and metals and mold is a huge one. And at some point we start to spill over the top. And when we spill over the top, we tend to be symptomatic with neurodegenerative diseases or we have brain fog or we have um, physical hives and manifestations of the mast cell stuff or we have just headaches or migraines are really common and there's many many more things but often you'll start to manifest because your buckets overloaded and your water's flowing over the top so part of the getting well is getting out of that mold decreasing the load in that bucket and I always say, gosh, it'd be nice to know all the thousands of things that are in your bucket, but you really don't have to. All you have to do is reduce the water level by a certain amount so that you can have margin again, because our bodies were created to detoxify. And we, we give back that margin by getting out of the mold environment, starting detox. Our bodies will detoxify eventually. It's just, we need to give that margin back. So what you were experiencing after the mold and what I did too is, first of all, we have this mast cell activation so often we're more reactive and sometimes they call that unmasking because as we lower the level in the bucket um, we actually become slightly more reactive i don't know about you but if i walk into a house with mold i can actually tell pretty quickly our hotels so i call myself the mold dog i'm sure you're the same right Definitely. Can, yeah and that's kind of that unmasking and sensitivity it's a gift and a curse um, because we can tell if there's some place we want to stay or leave right away but we also are going to be more sensitive and what you experienced is what a lot of my patients and yours, I'm sure too, experienced is this, um, gosh, there's maybe no mold in this new home that you're looking at. That's wonderful. But there is chemical off-gassing in that, whether it's the um, for the the kind of granite countertops off gas uranium of all things the the cabinets the wood almost always off gases formaldehyde unless you have like pure hardwood cabinets which no one does anymore um the flooring can be hugely off gassing all the uh, vinyl tiles the luxury vinyl tiles off gas carpets are huge producers of vocs so you have all these new materials in a home and it's a beautiful home with no water damage but you're having tons of off gassing and we were talking about ways to deal with that because now the decision is can i handle handle that because it might take a year or two. Um, and I think then like air filtration, air, like air exchange from the outside, those can help, but that's a hard decision um, because you do, do, you can still have reactions to that. Yeah. It, it's just like this fine line and just like leaning into like, what is the best option for now? Like, like yeah. I don't believe my body will always be this way. And it's like in order to continue to progress, it's like, do I throw myself into a situation that is like, perfect in my mind, but my body's not caught up there. And I think that can apply, like whether you're buying or whether you're renting, um, just kind of like making the best decision for like leaving your health first yeah. or putting your health first in order to like continue to get healthier versus to backtrack, um, I guess. And just like honor, like not getting frustrated with where you're at, yeah. just like honoring that. So I'm hearing something really important and I want to point it out because I'm sure the listeners are, are hearing this too, but I always joke before the age of 40, I lived above my head and I was really analytical in how I thought and made decisions. And then after my divorce, I started doing a lot of the work that I needed to do to heal. And what I found is I was kind of ignoring my body and what my body needed and what it felt and how sensitive I was. I thought I was kind of a bad, you know what? <laughs> and the truth is I'm a freaking sensitive woman. <laughs> 
And so I had to like, kind of, you know, like this, like, like super productive woman, I had to merge her with the really sensitive soul that God created me to be. And I'm joking, but the truth is it's kind of real. And so that whole below or above the head thinking, I had to go into my body. And what I'm hearing you say is you're like, oh, my head says this is perfect. But as I get into the environment, my body's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. And it may be yes or no. You maybe haven't decided yet, but there's this wisdom, this intuitive wisdom. Women, I think, have a very strong sense. And I ignored that for most of my life. And now I'm trying to reconnect with that part of myself. And I find it's the wisest part. It's the spiritual part. It's the intuitive part. It's the part of myself that really has a knowing that my head can't comprehend. And when we go there, we usually have the right answer. So I'm hearing you say like, that's the conflict and to listen to that. And it's a very spiritual sense too. Yeah, I mean, I call that going with your gut. Like yeah. that is like, yeah, honoring gut, heart, like it's connected. And so yeah. just to like trust the wisdom and like, uh, I have this sweetest um, mentor who she is the canary of Austin is what we call her because wow. she walked through mold illness for 30 years. And um, now she goes with people to like, basically mold hunt like you can pick up but she feels it in her body like she'll be able to say exactly what mold it is in this wow. mold as she walks by it and it was just such a sweet um she's older so she's not going many places during quarantine but we were on the phone when I went to go look at this house um again I was like Suzanne I don't know if I do it should I not do it she's like Lauren you need to like just stop and like, stop using this, your head, and like, just really feel into your body. Walk up the stairs. How do you feel right now? And it's just like, wow. I had the answer. Like, I knew how I felt when I like got out of my head. That's like, just like, don't think about how pretty it is. <laughs> and um, I think it's just like, it was just a beautiful kind of like karate kid moment of like the master teaching the student, and she's yeah. teaching me how to be a mold under because. <laughs> A lot of people ask me to do that nowadays now, um, but <laughs> no. it's just, yeah, what you're saying, I think it's so easy in our society too, in multiple areas, not just mold. Yeah, yeah. Um, whether it's relationships, like right. you know what the answer is, or um, even like what food do and don't agree with you if you're trying to figure it out. Like oftentimes my clients already know what is like making them maybe not feel super well, what does, or like even what innately is going on with them without doing lab testing <laughs> like sometimes I'll just like ask well what do you think is going on for your body and like as they're a little bit they've been more educated in our work together and we don't have to like press in so hard to like finding so many answers externally when you like I don't know just really like listen I love it and I totally agree with you again I was like this allopathic super science analytical nerd and then as I've embraced this other side I find it brings together I mean, God created us that way with the, you know, science and faith and also the intuition and the brain. And so these things work so well together. And I would agree with you. Some of my best insight into patients' cases and solving some of the problems is when I set temporarily the brain aside and it's all it's anal analytical stuff and just, you know, feel and ask them questions and listen. And usually they'll tell me the answers and then I'll still prove it with labs or whatever else we need to do. But it's so interesting because that's such a powerful sense of um, wisdom that we all have. If we just uh, can relearn how to connect with it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. Um, oh my gosh, this is so fun to talk to you. And I'm sure that people are relating because a lot of people have suffered mold related illness and are sensitive and trying to find a place to live. Um, Let's switch gears just a little bit. And I want to hear about what you're doing, what upcoming projects you have. Tell me a little bit more about what you do with clients. Oh, yeah. Well, definitely work one-on-one -on -one with folks right now is what really where I've been spending my time in my business. So functional medicine, nutrition, and therapy, kind of just a hybrid and just really taking them on a synergistic ride or experience, um, mm -hmm. designing custom programs for them based on, I work mostly gut health, immune, mm -hmm detox from like mold um, and hormone balance with just helping women work with their bodies not against it is really kind of like where what I stand for and um, but really I feel like the quarantine time has been such a great opportunity of in incubation and really um, have really been diving into working on the gut and total gut reset I just finished a book called the total gut reset that will launch in the 
the spring, I guess, January time, um, oh. along with program and products like around that. But I just really believe health is an inside job and um, that that message, especially during times such as these, is one that's not being uh, maybe said enough or preached enough, like where we are learning about sanitization and social distancing and uh, wearing masks, but like there is so much optimization that can happen from the inside out. And so, and since our gut health determines so much of our total health, it's really helping to mystify like what, it, like beyond leaky gut and yeah. what it means to, to really optimize your gut health, to optimize your body from the inside out. And so that's where a lot of my energy has been being spent is in that incubation. Um, and then um, for my eating disorder, those in recovery from that, I have a program called Body Love Food Freedom that really is a functional medicine approach to recovery and just changing the way we do recovery. And um, my next group is kicking off in September for that. Awesome. And, and where can people find more information about yeah. this? About my you? website would be the best where they'll get the, the latest, drlauren.com. And Lauren is spelled with a Y, so B-R-L-A-U-R-Y-N.com. I will be sure and put that in the notes so that everybody has that link. Um, any last words of wisdom or um, thoughts that you have for people listening uh, to our interview today? I mean, I think our greatest setbacks are our biggest comebacks. And so just to really use like whatever current setback you are finding yourself in, like what is the opportunity here and just for that. And then also what we focus on expands. And so like, where are you putting your energy and your focus? And so that's where um, I think the greatest growth can happen or the greatest opportunity for, for healing. I love that. Well, best of luck to you in finding and uh, securing a safe place to live or the house to buy. We'll be praying for just wisdom and clear direction for that. And um, thank you for your time today, Lauren. It's so good to talk to you as always. Um, I really appreciate it. Mm, so fun.